All right, guys, welcome back to F1 News. The Australian Grand Prix is over. Charles Leclerc takes a dominant victory for Ferrari from start to finish, but certainly not the only storyline of the day. Another DNF for Max Verstappen, a big blow to his title attempts. Red Bull believe they might have explained what went wrong, a different issue, it seems, to what they had in Bahrain. Very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I would greatly appreciate it. All that good stuff. Let's dive right in. Let's just hop straight into the race, to be honest. Lights out and away we go. First corner was really interesting. Perez got a pretty good start up against Verstappen. But just the way this first corner is, he had to break pretty early. Hamilton was like, yeah, thank you very much. Flying down the inside, takes Perez all the way up into P3 for Hamilton after, you know, not the greatest quality. Both of the kind of McLarens get boxed out of it. Russell ends up fighting Perez for kind of P4, P5. Eventually, Perez gets P4 and that manages to fight his way back against Hamilton as we shall see. But Leclerc already up straight up. Fantastic start for him. Sainz had an absolutely woeful start. Honestly, just an abysmal weekend for him. Qualified P9. Right at the start, he had an awful start. I'm pretty sure like there was a steering wheel problem. They had to change his steering wheel before the race kicked off and um, and therefore like he had like some sort of anti-stall thing enabled. Basically got an atrocious start. Ended up P14. Then tried to fight his way back on lap 3. Got very optimistic around the outside of turn 9. Completely butchered it on the brakes. Ends up on the grass and then gets stuck in the gravel right. And that's the thing. The gravel, very unforgiving and um, well, finds himself beached in the gravel trap. That's over. The 17 race point streak for him comes to an end. So honestly like if he'd have been a bit more patient off the start, like, um, you know, taking a few more laps to warm up the hard tyres he was on going for a longer stint, then he could have really made something happen, because the Ferrari today was an absolute monster of a car, there's no doubt. And it incites his hands. He could have made a great run right as the race went on. He could have easily got, you know, top four, top five, potentially podium, who knows. It, like, that would have been one of the more exciting things of the race if science had been barreling up the field. Doesn't happen for him, though. He talks about some of the issues that they were having behind the scenes in the garage before everything kicked off. So, yeah, the steering wheel he had to change and some other problems Ferrari have had. It's not plain sailing for them as a team, but, um, you know, Charles Leclerc, as if Charles Leclerc was a team, he would be top of the, the Constructors' Championships right now, which is pretty incredible, but so, uh, yeah, Sainz not putting the, the greatest pen to paper in terms of trying to say, yes, he can still be the number one driver for this team, it's only a matter of time until, um, you know, they're going to kind of say, yeah, Leclerc, you can have it all your own way if we want to battle Max for the championship, but of course it might not come down to that based on the kind of reliability issues they have right now. Get back underway, Leclerc does a good restart this time, of course, as we looked at yesterday, the, um, well, the rules have not necessarily changed, but now they They've said they're going to enforce them in terms of the safety car restarts. Verstappen can't come right alongside you. You have to be, you know, further back. You have to be a car length back, effectively. So, well, definitely gave Leclerc some advantage here on the restarts. He makes it work. Hamilton P3 at this time. Perez eventually does get past him, though. Makes a great pass. And, um, well, honestly, it was pretty interesting because the Red Bull looked stronger early on. But as the stint progressed, Perez really dropped back. I think the tide degradation seemed to be much worse on the Red Bull than it was for the Ferrari or the Mercedes. And all of a sudden, the Mercedes were closing in once again on Perez. And if Perez hadn't pitted when he did, did, Hamilton would probably have had him over the next two laps. It was interesting how that the whole battle played out, to be honest. And well, during this period, it looked like the McLaren might even be a stronger car than the Mercedes. They were right behind, um, you know, Hamilton here and Russell. He was kind of backing up the McLarens. Like, that duo looked very solid and looked, on honesty, like quicker than the Mercedes for this time. As the race went on, though, proved to be a somewhat different story. But yeah, lap 14 was very interesting. And then another safety car. Basically, um, you know, Vettel, I'm pretty sure, went off track early on. He then barrels into the wall, takes off his, his front wing, like I caught it on the curb. Maybe just a bit too optimistic with this, um, you know, very suspect Aston Martin car right now. He bells off, new safety car comes out. What that means is Perez and Hamilton having just pitted, Russell manages to get both of them with the cheap kind of safety car pit stop. So he finds himself up into third. Leclerc, Leclerc first still, Verstappen in P2. But um, and Alonso found himself P4 because he hadn't pitted yet and was going for a long stint. Didn't really work out for him though. There was a driver that did go for a long stint that that worked out for. We'll look at here in a second. Now, um, well, the restart goes through. Honestly, a really interesting restart because Leclerc got a pretty tough start. He understood into the final corner, gave Verstappen a great run down the pit straight and I thought with the kind of extra straight line speed the Red Bull had, he was potentially going to breeze past him. Leclerc manages to hold on to the position into the second straight as well, then into the back straight and um, all of a sudden within a few laps, Leclerc's once again putting time on Verstappen and the Red Bulls. Like um, that Ferrari was an absolute monster. But arguably it's more of the Red Bulls being slow because the Mercedes looked much better this weekend but maybe it only looked better in comparison to the Red Bulls looking much slower because in terms of um, the Mercedes to Ferrari pace differential, wasn't too much different to what we'd seen at the last couple of races. But um, the Mercedes was much closer to the Red Bull to be showing that they are the ones that have dropped off the pace a fair bit, at least in terms of the setups for this weekend. But uh, Perez manages to get Russell back. He moves up into P3, of course, just behind Verstappen. But uh, well, then this happened. Max Verstappen out of the race. We kind of, I was looking at the, the timesheets, right, and I was seeing Verstappen lose a second in about, um, in one corner. I was like, what happened? Did he lock up again? Something went wrong. All of a sudden, we see this shot. 
a bit, um, you know, getting out of the car. This seemingly was an issue they were prepared for, or at least not necessarily prepared for, they didn't want it to happen, but I thought it might be a possibility. Pretty sure Perez, he went on the phone to the engineer on the radio, and the engineer said, look, it's not something we need to really worry about. It was an issue that they thought they might have with their car. It does go wrong out of the race that another Red Bull powertrain issue, right? We've seen already Yuki Tsunoda has gone through like two power units. Gasly's one exploded at Bahrain. Like, um, of course, the fuel pump issues that caused the failures at Bahrain for both Red Bulls. Like an awful start to the season for them in terms of reliability and puts them so much on the back foot in terms of this championship battle, not just on the constructors, but also on the World Drivers' Championship with what Leclerc is doing right now. Leclerc like just dominates the rest of the race, ends up winning by like 20 seconds. There was a lot of talk as well about the fastest lap of the race because uh, Leclerc was on the radio saying, look, you know, should I go for the fastest lap? I want to do it before I get to traffic because um, I might not get it, right? And um, the Ferrari engineer was like, look, we think you're going to get this pretty comfortably. We don't think anyone can match you. Good job we did put in a great final lap on lap 58 though because Alonso, I believe, would just have nabbed it right to the end of the race on it. He did another pit stop because um, things weren't going particularly well for him. But uh, Leclerc manages to take it once again. So fastest lap, winning from start to finish. Alex Albon, though, we've got to mention him before we talk about Leclerc a bit more because the Williams team did an incredible tactic, an incredible strategy of just saying, um, you know, Alex, just go as long as you possibly can on these hard tyres. And apparently, the hard tyres held up ridiculously well on the Williams. He did 57 laps on the tyres he started with at the start of the race, went on to the softs for one lap at the end, and managed to hang on to 10. So it was unbelievable. I guess they were kind of hoping that Latifi would bid it in the wall again, even though not good for their bank account. But, you know, maybe a late safety car would have done wonders for this team, but they still managed to pick up a 10. So awesome stuff. That leaves Aston Martin, the only team to have failed to score a point so far this year. Didn't really expect that to be the case. But yeah, here goes Leclerc. 20 seconds ahead of Perez, Russell in P3, Hamilton P4. The end was quite interesting between both Mercedes because like it seemed like Hamilton was going to push Russell, maybe overtake him, like fight for the podium. But it's seemingly some sort of overheating issue for the Mercedes. Like Hamilton was pretty much told just stay behind and ease up. And that's kind of why that radio message came in saying you're making it very difficult for me. That wasn't to do with the fact that, um, you know, he'd obviously got unlucky with the safety car benefiting Russell. And also when Perez passed him, he had a chance to come back at him. But uh, the safety car came out just at that point and therefore he couldn't get back at him because yeah, he might have been able to have a chance to go back but the safety car comes out so the positions were locked to that point. Hamilton's somewhat unlucky but it's certainly not the fault of his team. The reason why that was said is because I believe they were telling him like just ease off don't battle Russell and he's kind of saying well look my driving instincts want me to go for him but you know reliability I suppose at just finishing the race above all given what we've seen with Verstappen. These are the top 10 and Charles Leclerc with the grand slam so he gets the fastest lap of the race leads every single lap of the race gets out well starts from pole position as well right so every single year this has been achieved it's not been achieved many times I believe 26 drivers in history have achieved this 18 of them have won the world championship at one point or another the last effectively the last 10 times this has happened the driver that's achieved it has gone on to win the world drivers championship that year is that a sign of what's to come here for Leclerc and the Ferrari team because they looked monstrous today this also from George Russell doesn't matter how fast your car is if you don't make it to the end very much true and Red Bull certainly have to figure out very quickly what they are going to do about their reliability problems because as Max even says he doesn't even want to think about the championship. They're in a horrible spot. They're so far behind. And of course, the championship is very long. All sorts of stuff can change. It's, a, you know, it's not written off by any means. But the fact that they're not even really wanting to think about the championship, they've just got to focus on making sure this car can get them to the end of the race. And like, um, yeah, I was kind of concerned about Perez, right? Whether he would just retire as well in a Bahrain type situation. He manages to make it to the end. But so, yeah, not looking good at all for them. Of course, we've got to talk about what potential issue this might have been. Helmut Marco says, but potentially a problem with the fuel tank or the fuel line more than concerned especially considering Ferrari's speed. Not only do they have incredible pace, but Ferrari's reliability has been fantastic so far this year, apart from a few niggling issues that Sainz had to deal with this past weekend. This also, as Helmut Marco says, apparently nothing wrong with the engine, potential problem with the fuel tank or fuel line again. So that's rather interesting, right, if this is actually the case, because um, a similar type issue, I suppose, to what they had in Bahrain, but are not to do with that kind of, um, you know, kind of generic part that every single team has. So not sure what's going on here. They reckon not an engine issue, but it's something to do with the fueling, which, um, you know, again, it was a weird the way that um, kind of uh, Verstappen's car exploded, didn't really explode, right? But he got out, it was smoking, there was fire at the back. Looked like a very similar Gasly type incident at Bahrain when I believe it was a power unit issue. So, um, look, very difficult to say, but, um, you know, of course, Horner was talking about it. Very frustrating for them, of course, as a team, but also suggesting at the time it might not have been engine related because I believe they kind of thought this stuff might come. Like um, he actually said at the time, it might be a fuel issue as well. So that's what they believe is going on. This is also mentioned here by Craig Scarborough just because it um, seems like the only external fuel line comes from the tank to the high pressure pump on the engine this might be the cause of the failure kind of right here so potentially that's what's going on it's very tough to say maybe we'll find out more over the coming days but um you know they seem to get on top of the issue they had in Bahrain 
when they went to Jeddah, but now potentially a new issue arising. It seemed like they kind of knew this was coming as well, just because as Adam Cooper points out, before the race began, they made a fair few Parc Ferme changes for Verstappen's car. The auxiliary radiator, they changed that for Perez as well. The fuel cell loom. I'm not an expert on what all these parts are, but like, um, you know, they changed a fair few things around on Verstappen's car, potentially kind of thinking there might be some issue there, which I ended up coming back to bite them anyway. So remarkable situation. Verstappen falls out again, another DNF. People were saying the number one in his car. Sounds for the number of races he's finished so far this season. Got to talk quickly about the Mercedes as well, because yes, they, I think they look somewhat better this weekend, especially in terms of race pace towards the end of the stints as well. Seems like Hamilton was actually running with an extra kilo and a half on his car, just straight up senses, trying to gather data to sort out their issues. So pretty incredible that Mercedes are resorting to put extra weight on the car, just so they can understand a little bit more about their issues that maybe they can't do in simulations in this type of stuff. And also it was then kind of mentioned by Mercedes after the fact that um, it was better, you know, not to drop points with these reliability issues. That's why Hamilton backed off towards the end as the car was getting hot. And I believe also other issues for the McLaren drivers, they said that there was also potentially some overheating issues with their engines. It's not the ideal situation for Mercedes, but actually I believe when you look at them, the points finishes on the day, most of the points went to Mercedes powered engines. So a more promising finish for them than they've had in quite some time. But of course, as a team, not where Mercedes want to be. Here we go then, team and driver standings, just to finish out the video as a result of this race. Ferrari leading the way, 104 points for them. Mercedes in second place with 65, Red Bull at 55, then McLaren jump all the way up to fourth with a great result for them today. Great to see Danny Rick at his home race have a great time. Of course, it wasn't great, P6, but you know, better than they've been so far this year. Much better than many were expecting. Haas, very difficult weekend for them. They came P13, P14, so you know, definitely fell off the pace where they've been the last couple of races. Williams put a point on the board, leaving only Aston Martin, the team, to fail to do that so far this year. The driver's standings now look like this. As I say, if Leclerc was a constructor, he would be ahead of the Mercedes for P1 still. He has 71 points. George Russell up into P2 now, but uh, still, he has more points than second and third combined. That's pretty incredible. Sainz after a Torrid affair, he's now P3. Perez up into P4. Hamilton P5 at 28. And then Verstappen in 6th with 25. So incredible how tight it all is right here already. Of course, we expect this to change as the season progresses. But Leclerc's already putting a significant gap on the rest of the field, right? That's the thing. Red Bull can't focus really on the championship and focus on Leclerc. They have to focus on actually finishing the races. And P2 would have been solid for them today. But even with a P2, Verstappen would have been almost 30 points behind Leclerc after this one. So very interesting how this develops going forwards. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time.